If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Good morning and welcome once again to another episode of Vacation Rental Success. And I just noticed I said good morning, that sort of gives it away that here we are at... uh, seven o'clock in the morning and I've just been out taking the dogs for a walk and it's freezing. I have to say it was just above freezing this morning. At least that's what it felt like. I got got out of bed all all um, eager to go for a run, put on my running gear and I got to the door and opened it. And it's just like, oh, now I need gloves and a hat. So I chickened out. I chickened out. I went and uh, put a pair of jeans on, a sweater and harnessed up the dogs and off we went. And it was a beautiful walk. Um, Yes, it's cool. It's the vagaries of our Ontario weather that they do throw in occasionally, this this curveball when you're expecting all this heat and humidity and then all of a sudden you get a cold, cold morning. Made me think actually while uh, while I was out that we have guests in a number of properties at the moment and... I know in my property at Kingfisher Cottage, I have already um, switched over the winter bedding to summer bedding. So there is just a, there's a sheet, a light blanket and a bedspread. And I just got to thinking, wow, I bet my guests got cold in the night. But of course, we have in the cub, in the closets, in the bedrooms, there are all sorts of alternatives as spare blankets, as quilts and eider down. So they have plenty of choice if they do get a little cool to enable them to, um, to warm up a little bit. A lot of places don't have heating on at this time of year. I mean, why would you? It's them coming up on, well, about a third of the way into June. But it's certainly worthwhile thinking about and it's, it's just... Some of these things that I want to talk about today, and you've just got me today, no interview, just me rattling on. Um, Reason being is that I am just writing the newsletter that will go out to all our registered owners next week. And it's a newsletter I do every year, and it's a sort of checklist. It's a pre-season checklist. Have you done this? Have you done that? Are you ready for the onslaught of guests, because for those of you who have a constant turnover of guests throughout the year, you have a property manager that goes goes in every week um, or every couple of days if you rent for short breaks. In fact, I was was just talking to Rod Fitz from Avroa. We had a Skype call the other day and he was talking about his condo uh, on uh, Gulf Shores. And I was asking him about his occupancy and he said, yeah, it's about 80 to 85% occupancy throughout the year. And he has different people coming at different times of the year. So he has his snowbirds through the winter. And then as winter draws to a close and the snowbirds go home, then he goes into March break. And then there's a little bit of a lull um, through April and, and then it starts gearing up for the summer season and turns over to more family groups through the summer. His condo is right on the beach, right next door to the Gulf Shores um, State Park, which is absolutely beautiful. I go down there every year, and if you've never been there before, it's certainly worth a visit. So that's a little nod to Gulf Shores. Um, but I was thinking about the fact that uh, that you know Rod was saying at a, when he go he goes with his uh, his wife in November. And they spend the time doing all the maintenance issues and um, replacing things that have have seen the uh, seen the rigors of of a complete year of rental. Whereas in our area, as I've mentioned before, we really just have July and August for the majority of properties. It's the eight to 10 weeks of the summer season that that we have the bulk of our rentals. And and actually, a lot of the properties will close up after Labor Day and not get opened up again till next May. 
So these these properties have been have been sitting empty, a lot of them for a long, long time. So we want to make sure as a property management company or rental agency, which is actually what we are, we're not, we don't do property management. We don't do the changeovers and the cleaning. We actually rely on our owners to manage that aspect of the business. So it's really important that we contact all, just about 200 of them at the beginning of the season to make sure they're ready. Now, very many of our owners have been with us a long, long time. They know the drill. They know what happens. They know what to expect. And they certainly know what happens or the consequences of not preparing well enough. But every year, and this year is, is no different. In fact, we have many more new owners this year than we've had in previous years. It's been a sort of bumper year for taking on new properties. So... So this year, even more so, we have to get this message out to our owners because so so many of them are brand new to the business. Now, we've gone through our education process. We've talked them through all the things that may or may not happen. We've told them what our guest expectations are and what our expectations are of them. So it's this, this newsletter is really a reminder to everybody. And I just thought I would share with you what I put in that newsletter. Because even though we have a pretty unique way of rent, renting our properties and, and not doing the property management as most companies do, or at least not having a handle on the property management, many of the issues that I talk about with our owners in this newsletter are, are common to all vacation rentals right the way across the world. It's, you know, we, we, we're all in this business that has so many commonalities. Although they talk about it being fragmented, in essence, it's not. We really are all providing, we hope, a high standard of accommodation to very demanding guests. And even though our guests across the world are looking for different things, Essentially, they're all looking for a great vacation. That's, that's common to everybody. They want a great vacation. They don't want to be beset with problems. They don't want to be disappointed. They want to kick back, relax, enjoy their time on vacation. So if we can do whatever we can do to make that as easy for them as possible, then we really are doing our job. And this is what I'm getting across to our owners in our management company that that is their job to prepare the property for rental. We've essentially done our job as a rental management company. We have, we have found the guests for them. We've matched the right guests to the right cottage and we take that role extremely seriously. We don't want any surprises. We don't want anyone to have it any surprises. We don't want our owners to have surprises or our guests to have any surprises. So we are transparently honest with every aspect of every property. And we, 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 we show our listings with every amenity and every feature. So we've got to make sure that when, when those guests get there, after we've done our job to find those guests, that the property is in pristine condition and ready for them to enjoy their vacation. So while I recognize that our, our cottage properties on our lakes and some of them down 30 kilometers of dirt track are not the same as let, let's say Rod's condo on the Gulf Coast at Gulf Shores, but there are a lot of similarities. So let's go. Um, I haven't numbered these and I haven't put them in any particular order, but what we're going to talk about, and I'll, I'll just just in, just in case you want to uh, jump out of this right now because it's not for you, I'm going to talk about a checklist for final preparation before the season, maintaining consistency and how important that is, maintaining consistency over a long period of time uh, and how important that is. I am going to address the, the issue of liability because I spent a lot of time with insurance broker Ross Robertson at the Vacation Rental Success Summit, that they were one of our, our sponsors at the summit. 
And Ross was there all weekend talking to people. And I always know when, when Ross is talking to somebody, it's, it's not, he's not talking about fun stuff. You know, they usually have issues about liability and how they should be insured. So I want to cover off some of the liability issues that, uh, that Ross talked about and also what owners should put in place to address the potential of liability claims. I'm going to cover checking in and first impressions because that's really important. On a summer Saturday, we can have anywhere from 150 to 200 families checking into a property at four o'clock on that day. And we get issues. We, in fact, employ somebody just to answer those issues. And, and we also have a team to back her up because um, you know, the calls will come in, not necessarily complaints, but issues that often could have been addressed prior to the guest arriving. So we'll talk about that. A little bit on emergency planning. I did a, a, a podcast recently on emergency planning, and I shall refer back to that. But um, there's just a couple of things I include in my newsletter about that. What information needs to be on site when your guests arrive? And something that's, that may be more specifically tied into our area, it's about having a garbage plan. Garbage is one of the, handling garbage is one of the big issues that we face because we don't have, in general, any town pickup. There's a few properties that have curbside pickup. But even so, that brings with it its own issues. And, and the other thing is, is that cleaners often don't have garbage collection on their remit. They don't pick up garbage at the end of a stay. So our guests often have to, to do their own garbage removal which makes for an interesting scenario sometimes. And I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. And then finally, I'm just going to talk about the neighbours. Talking to the neighbours. It's really important that in certain areas, you talk to your neighbours and let them know what, what you're doing and what they should expect in, over a summer season as well. So let's kick off. My newsletter, as I say, covers a, a whole range of things. But the first thing is, I'm saying, has, is your preparation finished? Are you ready? Are you ready for, for these guests to come? I, I give all our owners a checklist anyway. We have a resources library that, uh, that they can access and go to all these checklists. And one of them is, is, is a preparation checklist. It says, are you ready for your rentals? And it's some, some little things that, that we ask our owners to check at the beginning of every season but also, these things should be checked really, really frequently because I've always been a little bit concerned about that poor family that, that sort of draws a short straw. That Their vacation is the last week of August. They arrive at the property after eight or nine other families have gone through it. And if that property has not been accurately, has not been properly checked between each rental with a checklist fo that's followed, then they're likely to be the ones that experience most of the problems because, you know, things break down, uh, things go missing, and, and perhaps cleanliness is not as good at the end of the season as it was at the start. I mean, at the start of the season, you've done a deep clean, everything's pristine and ready to go, but through the season, there's only the three or four hours between guests to do the cleaning, and things get missed. So... That, that's sort of as an aside, but the, this preparation list covers things like are all the appliances in working order? And that means all the small appliances too. It's okay just polishing up the coffee maker, but do you know it actually works? Check out the timer on the stove. Is it working? Is the over stove light working? Are, is, is the toaster working? Just check every appliance every little thing plug it in check that it works and it's amazing how many things you find that actually aren't working if they haven't been used for a while i want to check that the deep clean is completed and that every owner has actually done a deep clean of the property not not just a flick around with a duster and and a vacuum over a rug i mean getting into every corner and doing all the kickboards cleaning behind the toilet around the toilet in the toilet should be a no-brainer. And I know for many of you who are in very different locations, you're thinking, 
this is just common sense. But do you know we still we still live with the throwback properties that uh, that I remember from my early days in the business in Ontario, where an owner would come to a property, open it up at the beginning of the season, then go back to the city and not go back to it, or nobody went back to it until the end of the season. And that owner just relied on their guests to do the changeover every week. So they relied on their guests to clean before they left and make it ready for the next group of guests. I know that sounds archaic, but we still have properties and we still have owners that think that that is acceptable. I actually talked to one of our own owners recently and and realized that she was still of this mindset um, because she told me that... um, she had not been, I haven't been able to get a cleaner this year, she said. So I'm making my checklist even um, even longer so that the guests know that they what they have to do to make it ready for the next ones. Um, yeah, you're getting a stunned silence from me because that's, that's, what, that's what she got. And it, it, I was horrified. And I had to say that um, we would not be able to continue with any of her rentals. And we would have to relocate all her guests if she was unable to provide a changeover service, if she was unable to provide somebody who would go in at the end of every rental and do the clean before the next guest walked in. And that that is, to me, complete common sense. And I was I was clearly shocked at uh, that, that, that she had that notion that this was okay. I think I was at fault because I had obviously never put it across to her how important that was. The other thing is, is that if somebody damages something and it's not checked between rentals, how are you ever going to know um, that something's broken and needs replacing before the next guest? So, so yeah, so we want to make sure that the deep clean is done at the beginning of the season and that there is cleaning and changeover services in place for the end of of every rental. Uh, I want our owners to supply new pillows and freshly laundered bedspreads at the beginning of each season. Again, wouldn't you think this was a no-brainer? But in um, in certain areas, it's almost commonplace to to go to a rental cottage and to find that the comforters on the beds are the same ones that have been there for 20 odd years and they might have had one or two washes over those years. It's amazing what I see when I go out and look at properties and also the reaction I get when I say, you really need to buy some new bedding here. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with this. We've been using it for years. Yeah, go figure. Um, I would ask our owners if they're um, to check all their towels to make sure that they're staying free and they are fluffy and not, and they haven't been sitting there all winter and they're smelling musty. So I want them all freshly laundered and fluffed up. And I want them to make sure that they have all their paper products and supplies in place for the whole season. So whether that's uh, in a lockable cupboard or in a shed or a, a garage or basement or somewhere, whether they can be accessible at the end of every rental. So, we don't get to the situation at the end of the summer where there are no paper product products for for the, the cleaner to uh, to collect for the upcoming uh, guest intake. The situation that most of our our owners are in is that they could be fifteen or twenty kilometres from the nearest general store. So a cleaner turning up to do a changeover wants everything in place uh unless you know if if they're bringing the stuff with them that's absolutely fine my own cleaner caretaker property manager carol carries in her vehicle all the paper products for each property she's going to and but that is part of my remit as an owner to ensure that she does this she has a checklist that i supply and in fact after talking to alex nig and tammy sims uh, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast about properly we have now we're now putting in place the properly app so she has all those checklists uh, on her phone 
and there is there will never be any room for doubt or room for missing something or leaving something behind. There are a couple of other aspects of preparation, but I, I just want to make sure that all our owners have this checklist that they can go through it. They can say, yes, the appliances are working. Yes, we've done the deep clean. Yes, we've got new pillows. Checked all the towels. All the paper products are in place. Other the safety issues like checking the batteries in the smoke alarms, making sure that they are work in all in working order. And uh, I've actually included this in the liability check, but I'll mention it now, is fire extinguishers. Are your fire extinguishers up to date? That's what I want to, to uh, that's what I ask our owners to check. Check the dates on the fire extinguisher. And if they're out of date, replace them because if there happens to be a fire and the fire extinguisher doesn't work then the liability issues there are high so lots of pre-season preparation there so let's go on to liability because it's it's a big issue for me after talking to uh, to Ross at the vacation rental success summit i i have an issue with my own property in that uh, we have we, we are going through some major erosion issues at the shoreline, and the, the shoreline is beginning to fall away into the water. Um, we, we've, we're in the process and the throes of engineering reports and looking at, uh, at major construction work to check this erosion and to stop I mean, to stop the property falling into the water because it's something that may happen over the next five years or so if something's not done. But we've had some issues with sinkholes appearing in the uh, waterfront lawned area. And we've had to, we've, we've filled them in. We've filled them in with rocks and rubble and all sorts of fill. But there is the potential for more sinkholes appearing. And that has, that, that's freaked me out when I talked to Ross. And he said, well, you know, if you know it, if you know that something is a, is a possibility... And you're doing all these um, this, this research into uh, engineering reports and erosion control, then you are aware that there is the potential for these sinkholes to appear. So, in in view of that, we've had to erect a fence right the way across our front lawn, and put notes into our welcome book to to say you must not set foot on any part of this property. Fortunately, we have a, it, it's a large property. We have lots of other lawned areas for, for guests to go. And it's, uh, unfortunately, the fence is a little bit unsightly because it's bright orange. But it, it has to be so. And unfortunately, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that we will explain to our guests. But in talking to Ross, he's, his, um, his mantra is, you need to show that you have not been negligent because if you, if a liability issue arises it's the first thing that in the insurance companies are going to look at was the owner negligent in any way and this covers just about everything it could you know we, we hear all the time on tv about slip and fall accidents somebody's tripped over something and they're looking for somebody to blame because there's an ambulance chasing lawyer out there who tells them that they can make money from this and, you know, I, I do agree that if somebody really hurts themselves, if they, if they slip and fall and hurt themselves, then there is, you know, why, why not seek some compensation if you're not able to, um, to work or if you, if you have an injury that's going to have far-reaching repercussions. And naturally, that's what your insurance is all about. That's why you have rental insurance and liability insurance. But any insurance company is going to check, first of all, whether you have been negligent. So your liability checks at the start of each season are just, just so important. And so you check absolutely everything to make sure that you're covered. If you've got a swimming pool or a hot tub, are there gates? Is the fencing in working order? Do you have a lock on the gate? Can a child get in? And we have issues, of course, because we have open water in, in 200 of our properties. And most of them have 100 feet of open waterfront. And there's no way of containing that 
and pr protecting children from walking into open water or walking down a dock and falling off the end. Of it. This is something I've, I've talked about with, with Ross. And he said, yes, you know, if a child walks onto a dock, goes down to the end, jumps off it, and then injures themselves because it's only two feet deep. If you have not warned guests the depth of water and that diving or jumping is not permitted, then you could be held negligent. So this is something we, we ask all our owners at the beginning of each season to make sure that they have covered off everything in their welcome book. And that means they have said what the depth of water is at the end of a dock and that jumping or diving off the end of a dock is not recommended at any property, as is wearing water shoes. We, we suggest that everybody brings water shoes to wear because there are zebra mussels in our lakes. Uh, not every lake, but the majority of them do have the risk of zebra mussels. And, and if we don't warn our guests that these exist, a child is going to run into the water, cut their foot, or as we had a couple of years ago, a child, on the, on the day of their arrival, this child ran into the water, just got out of the car, ran into the water, fell over because there were rocks in the water, ripped a huge gash in his leg that required 30 stitches. So that was the start of their vacation. Uh, they, they did not make any claim which was fortunate because there was nothing in that welcome book to say there were zebra mussels in the water and water shoes were recommended. However, we have put that in our pre-arrival information. So the guests actually had information that said there is the potential of zebra mussels in the water in all lakes. We strongly recommend you provide water shoes for every member of your group and that they wear them before accessing the water. So it's a bit like those, you know, I remember buying a new car a few years ago and going through the uh, the manual and finding all these little things, all these little um, instructions in yellow boxes, like do not stand up with your head out of the sunroof when you go under a low bridge. And thinking that this was crazily funny and isn't this just common sense that you wouldn't do that? Now I understand why you have to have all these warnings and instructions for people so that you are covering yourself. You're covering yourself in case of a claim. So your welcome book should address any hazards to avoid negligence claims. You know, even uneven terrain, uh, slippery slats. Here we go. Slippery steps. We actually did have a claim about 10 years ago from a guest whose mother-in-law slipped on a stone step that was covered in leaves after rainfall and um, hurt her ankle very badly on the first or second day of their vacation. Now, the owner had swept all the leaves off the steps, but this was fall. The leaves were coming down every single day so that even though they swept off their steps the day before the guests arrived and the leaves fell overnight and then there was rain which made the steps slippery we would still have been liable we could have faced you know quite a large uh, claim if that guest had put in uh, an insurance claim what what they did was ask for uh, a refund on a portion of their vacation that her mother-in-law could not enjoy because she'd slipped. And we actually made this payment on the advice of, of uh, our insurer that um, taking that claim any further to the insurance company would probably have, um, have cost us far, far more in damages. So certainly, you know, making, making those comments in a welcome book, just, you know, please be careful. If you're, Please be careful. The terrain around the property is uneven. There are some tree trunks. Take care um, and avoid tripping. Don't go off the pathway at night. Uh, so 
these instructions may, once again, may seem really, really common sense, but uh, it really is important to get those in somewhere. I'm trying to do it so that you don't have these, these uh, just this long litany of problems that could occur. In the pre-season checking, we ask for all deck planks to be checked, replacing old deck planks, old dock planks, checking all screws, nails are um, secured, just anything that could cause uh, an issue and then ultimately result in a liability claim. The other thing that, uh, that we are asking all our owners to do this year is to have a hot tub checklist. If they've got a hot tub, is to have a checklist. Because of the rising risk of hot tub folliculitis claims. So, so what happens? Guests arrive, guest family arrive at a, a, at a vacation home. The hot tub is pristinely clean, beautifully chemically balanced. The water may have just been changed. Um, it's, it's all ready to go. Overuse of a hot tub over a few days can create a, a nasty soup of stuff. That can cause, it can definitely cause things like hot tub folliculitis. Look it up if, if you want to know what that is. It's a skin, it's a skin complaint that come, you know, comes from bacteria. And it can have you know, fairly long-lasting effects. But what can happen that over a course of, of a week, if, if a hot tub is not maintained with the proper chemicals, if it's overused, that the water quality t- can degrade to such an extent that, that these situations can occur. So what can an owner do if they're not there for the entire week? and They've got nobody to go in and monitor the chemical balance in the hot tub. Well, what, what they can do, and this is what we suggest our owners do now, is that in their welcome book or in, a, in another folder, they have a hot tub uh, maintenance checklist that their caretaker or changeover person completes every week that says exactly what was done to the tub what the balance of chemicals was, when the filter was last cleaned, when the filters should be cleaned on every changeover anyway. Um, not all hot tubs do get changed. The water doesn't get changed every, every week. It's just not possible in our locations. But we can maintain the water quality by the accurate application of chemicals. So we have this checklist that the caretaker then checks off and says at the commencement of this rental, the balances were, were such and everything is perfectly balanced. And then we ask them to provide inst- really comprehensive instructions on how to use a hot tub. We, we, for my own hot tub, I supply some, uh, some chemical. It's called shock. We ask them to apply it after every use and leave the tub for at least 45 minutes before it's reused. We also have some guidelines on sensible use. So you don't go in there for longer than 30 minutes at a time. Small children should not use the hot tub. Um, and, and if they do, it should be for a very short space of time. Dogs should not be put in the hot tub. Amazing how much dog hair you find at the end of a rental in certain places with certain guests. The whole issue here is proving that you are not being negligent in the supply of the facility of a hot tub. And proving you are not being negligent means showing that it is well maintained and that you supply good instructions for guests on how to use it and when to let you know that the condition of the water has deteriorated. Um, and, and we tell our guests that you you if, it, if the water becomes cloudy, if there's an odor, if, if it's foamy, then you must stop using it immediately. So, so that's, that's the big thing for me this year on my liability check. Uh, next thing, get the check-in right. As I said, we have a ton of people going in on a, on a Saturday at, uh, at four o'clock. Over, over the course of 10 13 years and we've been in operation, we've heard it all. So we do tell our owners that these are the top, top issues that people have. The first one is access. If they get there and they can't get in because the code's been incorrectly set, then we're going to hear about it and they are going to hear about it. So we, we have a spare key um, placed on every property so that we know where that spare key is. 
the second most common cause of people calling us is wanting to find out where the Wi-Fi password is. Um, it's the first, I, I do it, I do it, I get into a place, the first thing is we unpack the car and I'm immediately getting my laptop out and making sure I can, I can connect to the, to the world so I can get work done while I'm there. So if I can't find the Wi-Fi password immediately, I'm thrown into a tailspin. I need to know that. So that, that's just, you know, make that, I don't even hide it in a welcome book, put it right at the front of your welcome, your welcome book. Um, on the front page or but for many of our owners we have limited bandwidth availability and our guest only gets three to five gigs a week so we encourage them to put their password wi-fi password in an envelope uh, and on the front of the envelope we encourage them to say opening this em- opening this envelope envelope constitutes your acceptance of the limitations of bandwidth at this location and that you have however many gigs uh, per week and that exceeding this may result in a charge on your damage deposit for overage. So, so that's, that's really important is getting that Wi-Fi p- passcode out there. Um, the next top complaint is, is cleanliness. Um, you know, people will call because there's, there's a hair in the shower or there is um, some, there's a dust bunny under the bed. So, that that's why it is so important that these checklists are carried out at the end of you know, on each changeover. We get calls for how to switch on the TV. How to? I mean, I know this. I I've got. I I have to go through three different remotes at home to actually get a a, a watchable picture on my television. There's one to turn it on. There's one to turn the satellite on. There's one to turn the sound on. There's one to turn Apple TV on. It's, it's, it's crazy. So don't expect that people will know how to do this. So I want all my owners to, to have some instruction on how to turn the TV on and other appliances because you know, kids arrive, first thing is TV's on, and if they can't fix it, um, if they can't get it going, then we're going to get that call. Another cause for a call is something they expected was missing. So that's why it's really important that on every changeover, that everything that is expected to be there is in working order and is in place. And if it's not, then at least let the incoming guests know that you're on the case, you know that something's missing, and you're going to get it fixed. And of course, we want to make sure that the first impression for every single guest from the beginning of the season to the end of the season is going to be exactly the same. So we want that consistency to be maintained. Again, it comes back to this properly app of, um, um, of Alex and Tammy's that, uh, that that is something that the caretaker, property manager can have to ensure that consistency is maintained uh, on every check-in. So emergencies, I, I ask all our owners to think of plan B for everything. What happens if something breaks down? What happens if the plumbing, if, if there's a problem with the water pump, if there's a power outage? What happens if something goes wrong electrically? What happens if an appliance breaks down? Do you have something in place, telephone numbers, somebody you can call, a maintenance person, a handyman, somebody that's available to go and fix something at very short notice? That is, is a list I expect all our owners to have. If something happens in a property, guests come to us. They call us first. They'll tell us that, that there is an issue. If, um, if we're able to deal with it, we will deal with it without ever contacting the, the owner. I mean, that's part of, of being a rental management company. We don't want to bother our owners. But there are certain things that only the owner knows about or only the owner can authorize. So we then will need to hand on that situation to the owner and we do expect them to be able to handle it uh, immediately not to tell us well no we won't be able to do that until next weekend that's that's not acceptable if somebody's on vacation and the air conditioning breaks down or they're in the they're there in the winter and the heating breaks down that is cause for those guests to leave the property and to get an immediate refund of their rental of the money they paid so it's really important to have the 
plan B in place for absolutely everything. We expect our owners to provide on-site information. So that's what I'm going to be reminding them to ensure that they have somewhere in the property all the manuals for all the appliances because we don't want, and we do get the, the midnight calls. Our call center will get the midnight calls to say, how do you work the microwave oven? Because we want to make popcorn to watch a late night. If the manual is, is not there, if, if it's not available, we will, we, we, we don't pass that on to the owner. Sometimes, sometimes I wish we could, but we don't. We would, we would probably, uh, I mean, we'd still deal with the call. One of us would be paged and we would have to get out of bed and see if we could help them go online and find a manual for that microwave to help them to make their popcorn. But if the manual's there, then, uh, then that call is not going to happen. Um, we want them to check the, uh, the, their welcome book to make sure that everything is up to date, that all the telephone numbers are up to date, all the tourist information is up to date. You know, we're in 2016. Let's not be showing tourist information from 2010. Uh, and I, so I have seen that. Is the information comprehensive? Is there everything there that a guest will need to have a great time? And I, you know, you can't have too much. I don't think you can have too much information. I think it's really important to, to get it out there. All the brochures, all the restaurant reviews, all, the, all your own uh, recommendations on places to go and things to do, that is I know as a guest, that's one of the first things we do when we get to a place. You know, we get into the evening and we've had a meal. And we sit down, relax. We're on vacation. And then you start to pick up, oh, what are we going to do? What should we do this week? And you want to find that information. You want to find where you can, where you can rent a boat, where you can rent a bicycle. Can, can, should we do some day trips? What are the best day trips to do? Because there's so many available. So that information should be there. And I really strongly recommend that our, our owners provide just so much information, whether it's in, uh, yeah, I mean, you can buy these, these, this great stuff from Staples, you know, the, these um, brochure cases and um, display things to put leaflets and brochures in. Um, you know, get something like that so it's easy for them to find. On-site information is, is tremendously important to prevent your guests needing to, to call and find out about it. Finally, talking to the neighbors. For most people, it's not an issue. But we are finding in our area, there's so many new properties coming onto the rental market. And there's so many uh, people now retiring to our cottage country areas and what used to be a seasonal vacation area has now become home for so many retired people. When they retire to cottage country, they have certain expectations. They have expectations of, of it being private and tranquil. They want to listen to the loons and, and the sounds of nature. And in many cases, the, they end up having to listen to rowdy neighbors having parties, singing and shouting around a campfire until two o'clock in the morning. So I know what it's like. I know what it's like to experience that. Talking to the neighbors is really important to let them know how the, the, the sorts of guests you're having in and what they can do if they have any complaints. You don't want your neighbors to fester over the course of a season and then send their complaints in on Labor Day saying what a dreadful summer they've had because of all these guests that have been there. We want, our, we want the neighbours to let us know as an agency or let them, the owners know if, if they're renting independently, if there's any issues at all. But you need to talk to your neighbours to let them know that it's okay to, to be upset if there is rowdiness and behaviour that is not what you'd expect from a normal family just going on vacation. Because, of course, there's going to be noise. Kids, kids don't keep themselves quiet. Music. So it's just important to get that relationship 
right with the neighbors. So we do encourage all our owners to go and have the chat with the neighbors. Um, and, and also, as responsible rental agents, we remind all our guests that they are to respect their neighbors and that it's a quiet and tranquil area. So it's always worthwhile just giving your guests that reminder that even though they are on vacation, not everybody else is. So that does other stuff. As I'm talking this through, I'm thinking of, of other things that I'm going to put on my newsletter to our owners. But that's, that's probably about it for, for this year and, and actually for, for sharing for this. If there's anything you think I've missed, let me know. It's not too late to, uh, to let my owners, owners know. But the, the, major, the, the primary goal of doing this is for everybody to have a great summer. It's for our guests to have a fantastic time because the property is fully prepared for them. And in, in, any, in the case of any emergency, everything is going to be handled. And, and they're, not, they're not alone out there having to manage everything for themselves. If they do get into a situation they can't handle, that there is somebody for them to call. It's a huge advantage to do this for our owners because they are not going to get the complaints or, well, they don't necessarily get the complaints directly from the guests because they come through us as an agency first. But ultimately, we have to contact the owners and say, this has occurred and you're not going to get a very good review because of it. And, and when it comes down to it, those reviews are so important and we want to make sure that our owners are getting the best reviews possible, but they need to know that they're responsible for the majority of them. And then finally, it's an advantage to us as an, as an agency to, to get everything right. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, our job is done all up front to get the right guests, to create the rental agreements, to make sure that guests know what to expect. But we then hand over that responsibility to our owners to make sure that the experience their guests have is exactly as, as has been described to them and is exactly what they expect. So I don't know if you've, um, you've picked up some nuggets from there to help you um, start your season, if that's what you're doing. If, if you're not and you're already halfway through, there, th through, through yours, maybe there's a couple of things that, um, that has nudged you to um, to make some little amendments or adaptations or changes so as ever it's been an absolute delight to be with you can't believe this um 50 odd minutes went so quickly and i you know as ever let me know if there's uh, anything that um that you'd like to comment on um just put it down at the bottom of the show notes and um i will i will respond to you so it's been an absolute pleasure. It's always a pleasure to do the, these um, these solo episodes, but uh, I, th I think I may ramble on a little bit. So I'm going to quit now. And uh, hopefully it's warmed up a bit now and I can go and take my office outside and go forward for the rest of my day. I hope you have a fabulous day and a fabulous season ahead. And I look forward to being with you again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.